just a transaction. It's a moment that they're going to remember forever. This is The Safari. The Safari is a tour around the consumer, brand, and retailing industry. And we have the great privilege here at my company, Traub, to really be exposed to many of the great minds of the industry who are forming and shaping the future of many different parts of the consumer brand and retail world. And I felt it was quite interesting for us to be able to not only learn from all of those people as we do every day, but uh, memorialize it into a podcast, which could then be shared with many of our friends and clients and, and you, obviously, the listener. Hi, this is Kate Durge, and welcome to The Safari. Today, I speak with Karen and Amanda Zuckerman, the mother-daughter duo behind Dormify, the one-stop shop for college and small space decorating. We talk about the collaborative experience of building and growing their unique platform, the importance of building relationships in business, and how they're evolving with their customer for all of life's important milestones. I loved this conversation, and I hope you enjoy. Hi, welcome to the safari. Today, I am thrilled to be here with the mother-daughter dynamic duo of Karen and Amanda Zuckerman, co-founders of Dormify. Hi, ladies. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for having us. Oh, I'm so thrilled that you all are here. And I have to say, as we were jumping on, I was thinking back to my days of decorating my own boarding school room and then college room. And I was hanging up sheets on the wall, which I thought was like the best looking decoration. (laughs) So I needed Dormify desperately. Um, But I'm so excited to talk about Dormify's journey and how you are helping hundreds of thousands of students and more across the country. So talk to me, ladies. Let's start at the beginning. How did Dormify begin? It's a great story. Um, when I was a incoming freshman at WashU, I was shopping for my first dorm room to create my home away from home. And I really disliked everything that was available in the market at the time. So I remember the August before move-in day, my mom and I met up for um, a shopping trip. I was a camp counselor, so I only had 24 hours to get it done. And we met in the city. I went to Bed Bath & Beyond. We were astounded at the lack of options in Twin XL bedding for college students that were really designed for an 18 year old. Everything was pretty youthful. There was nowhere to get everything that you needed and there was no one to help give you advice or tips along the way. So there was a very clear opportunity in the market and we had this light bulb go off literally in the kind of sad aisles <laughs> that path and beyond. Yeah. Um, and, um, From there, we went to move-in day, created a room that looked fantastic. And many other students who are my peers and their parents were struggling to do what we did, but we found it to be kind of simple. You just needed somewhere that was a one-stop shop to get everything you needed and something that was stylish and reflective of your own personal um, sense of style. So by my sophomore year, we decided to put together a blog. And this was the beginning of blogging. And this was probably the first content destination that focused on dorm decor and college life. And we actually put together a army of brand ambassadors that were friends of mine and friends and friends and very quickly became a network of strangers that were all in college and interested in talking about and writing about college lifestyle and dorm decor. So Very similar to how Glossier got started. We got our beginnings on a blog and then simultaneously figured out how to manufacture product. But I'll let my mom talk a little bit more about her background too and how it was instrumental in us getting this concept from an idea to actually executing it. Incredible. Karen, tell us. So um, at the time when Amanda thought of the brilliant idea... Um, And I just like went along with it. It was because I came from a creative agency background. So I started a creative agency back in 1987. And 
really, um, I was growing the business at that time. And so I just, we just decided to incubate Dormify into the agency while Amanda was in college. That was a great way to get started. It was a great way to build a brand. That's what my background is in and really like do something that we both really wanted to do, but never really thought about how to execute. I think that's one of the interesting things about when people say, I wish I had come up with that idea. I think like we have very rare complementary skill sets that allowed us to do that. Well, it's incredible because Amanda had the need, you had the know-how in the background and that dynamic combination really is what sparks, you know, true businesses but the fact that you could follow through. And Amanda, just cred to you as a freshman in college to be able to have the idea and then take it and run with it as you're in college studying and doing everything you were doing is pretty spectacular. It was really a partnership. It was um, really a partnership between the two of us. And it's funny because I always, I grew up in a family business. My parents ran this agency together. I always just assumed I would take it over one day because that was me following in my mom's footsteps and doing everything from having the same major to wearing the same clothes. Um, but then this, this white space in the market came up and this opportunity. So I think I already had that entrepreneurial energy sort of flowing through me, but, um, we found a a different way to channel it. And incredible because you both bring different strengths to the table. So how did, how did you do that sort of from that onset? You know, you had the need, Amanda, you know, Karen, you had the know-how in building a business and that entrepreneurial spirit, but Amanda, certainly that ambassador and that, you know, sort of that generation that you already had in your, in your network helped. But talk to me about the strengths that you both brought to the table in those initial, you know, first years. Yeah. So in the very beginning, um, I mean, one of the obvious ones is that I gave the perspective of a student while my mom gave the perspective of the parent. And during this shopping occasion, it's very much a collaborative experience um, between the parents and the students. So we brought, um, you know, where the parent and student would maybe butt heads and could like really understand the consumer in that way, which I think is one of the reasons why Dormify has been successful um, to date and why we stand apart from other retailers that are servicing this consumer. Um, We lived and breathed it. Everyone around us lived and breathed it. Mm -hmm. I had access directly to college students on campus for four years while we were building it. So it, it was almost like, in quotes, easy because we were living the experience and not trying to understand that market. We were living it. Yeah. Um, But in addition, I mean, I was, like you said, a college student, I was double majoring. I was trying to do school and like failing economics classes, you know, (laughs) doing all of that. But um, I didn't know anything about building a business. I learned everything that I knew through watching my parents and also just learning while doing in Dormify. So my mom really brought um, that experience to the table, which I think is invaluable when you're a young founder starting something but also um, something that really stands out about what my mom brought to the early days and still today is just the importance of building relationships. And I've seen her do that in both businesses over the years. So everything um, has really been based upon long-term relationships, whether it's with an investor, a vendor, a bank, you name it. Um, I watch her do that and um, see how it brought us to where we are today. Yeah, I love hearing that because I always talk about that, you know, having been in this business for a long time now, I always say to anyone coming up in the ranks, I'm like, greatest advice I can give you is never burn a bridge because you never know where someone's going to be and those relationships you have will just grow and evolve into different areas. So Karen, again, you know, Amanda's talked about her strength and how she had that network and she was like a living, breathing case study. And I'm sure you brought this into the classroom too, Amanda, but what what do you think about the the strengths you brought back in the day and and what you bring to the table now and and how the business has evolved? Yeah. So the business has clearly evolved a lot from the early days. Um, When we were first um, starting, we were just figuring out how to manufacture. Now we're, we're figuring out how to grow with our customer. So in the same way that our customer is, you know, 
they do graduate college and they go on to the next. We also have been evolving. So we get to continue to evolve with our customer. And by using the ambassadors, we also stay grounded, you know, right in college. Um, so some of the things that we're planning for the future and, and we're, we're kind of always thinking about this, but is, you know, what can we do for the first department? We've done a lot in that space and we've been really successful. But in another area that you might not think we would have such success, we are, we've been speaking a lot to a younger customer. Let's say like, you know, the 10 to 15 year old who wants to decorate their home bedroom. Um, we don't market to them, but they come to us because they want to be like the big sister, you know, like they want to have what a college student would have. So we're expanding more into that as well, just, just organically. Um, I have dreams of doing um, Dormify Baby someday. Uh, <laughs> really starting them early. <laughs> that's right. Maybe, maybe you when I have another baby. way. Yes, yes, yeah. Amanda. <laughs> and I was going to say, like, even if, maybe you look at it another way, which is our original customers back in the early days are becoming moms. And we can re-engage with that customer and they they could be along with us for the ride for that. And honestly, Dormify is not, while we are very focused in college and that is our number one reason for being, um, the true meaning of Dormify is to make something look better or um, more interesting or cool, as I would say. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that is that is the goal, and that's no matter no matter what you're designing. So it could be any kind of small space. Yeah, I love that. And you know what? You talk about how you're the one stop shop, and and as you were talking about Karen, I was thinking about you know all the young girls that are in my life and and nieces and and friends that we have who they do start so young now. They bring that refrigerator into their bathroom because they're you know the ten year olds are putting their skincare into their refrigerators, and they're all on social media. So I have to believe you know if you had launched this twenty years ago, let's say without you know that that direct connection with the consumer and that direct contact through social media, TikTok, what have you. It's just, it's such a different day and age. So you tell me a little bit about that interaction with the consumer because you are an e-com business. You do have pop-ups. I want to talk about the collaboration you have with Container Store and all of that, but tell me how do you engage with your consumer from, from the baby stage to the 10-year-olds to, to college and on? Well, I'm laughing because you're talking about social media and it's really interesting to think back on what the evolution of social media has been since we started the business because we launched the business without TikTok, without Instagram, without Pinterest, at least in the form that it is today. So we really relied on like traditional forms of media, like doing desk sides at different magazines and getting the editors to include us in the back to school roundup. And we landed Cosmo and we landed 17 in those early days, you know, a year after we had launched or maybe even during the launch. Which was huge. So it's just interesting. Yeah, that it was, was huge, huge back like, then. And that seemed like the coolest thing ever <laughs> right. that our pillows were in the 17 lobby and every celebrity that came in took a picture with it because it had a hashtag printed Amazing. on the pillow. And like, oh that is so cringy now, but that's yeah. what worked then. Yeah. And we had to also just jump onto every trend as social trends emerge. So I remember when we started our Instagram account and when we started our Pinterest account, obviously there was Facebook, but like starting the Instagram account and just even going back into the archives, it's, it's hilarious. Like People don't say chooky anymore, but it was the definition of chooky. And that's how. What, what, <laughs> when did they say that? And what is that chooky? <laughs> chooky just oh, means chooky. like the best example of it is, you know, like little tchotchkes and signs that say live, laugh, love. And you're oh, like, yeah. oh, like people don't buy things like that anymore. Because that's so, so cringy. That's cringy. <laughs> it's just, it's just like not cool anymore. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, point is that the social landscape has changed so much and we have always tried to be at the forefront of those new emerging platforms and trends. And I remember like before COVID, we were on TikTok and obviously COVID 
totally transformed what TikTok means to the consumer today. But I remember experimenting with it the few months leading into it. And we weren't even like truly early adopters, but thank God that we got ahead of it um, before it was just so mainstream to be creating content. So yeah, we, like the way that we engage with our consumers um, is obviously very connected to social. We do a lot of our own um, content production on all of our channels. Uh, we have ambassadors and interns who are the face of our social channels um, and are creating content from their own dorm rooms and on their own college campuses. So the way that we engage with the consumer to answer your question is um, we speak to them wherever they are. And they're on social, they're in our DMs, they're in our comments, we're having a conversation with them, like we are their big sister. That's really how we position the brand, um, which which means that we're both um, aspirational, but also relatable. And we're just conversing, whether it's on social, in our Geneva group for our ambassador community, or through our, our customer service channels. So that's where we really connect with the parent um, as well as on social, but we're having conversations on a daily basis and bringing that feedback into our organization on a you know, real-time basis, which I think really sets us apart. I was going to ask about that real-time basis because what is that feedback you're getting from them? Are they talking about product drops? Are they talking about you know, expectations, what they don't like, what they want? I'd love to hear a little bit more about what that feedback is and how you use that and then tweak whatever you're doing in production. Yeah. I mean, in the dorm shopping season, which we've just embarked upon um, after it May starts 1st. already. It's, <laughs> that is actually a great question because it starts and how long does that go? It's really about four months, okay. I would say, of peak shopping. But as you know, with any life moment. Um, there are the people who have been dreaming about their wedding dress since they were 10. And then there's the people who also know what their dorm has going to, what's going to look like since they were eight. So there's those girls who, um, have a longer lead planning time, but really we see people starting to shop in May with June and July being the peak of that. And then of course, during August, right before move in for any of the last minute shoppers, um, really everything starts to quiet down in the middle of the month. But yeah, it starts early because there's a lot to do. And there's a lot to do. So you're starting to get that feedback now, as you were saying, starting in May, consumer feedback. Well, we get feedback year round. So um, it depends on what time of year it is in terms of what type of feedback that we're getting. So during the time of the year when we're developing the following year's product in the fall, um, we'll be asking our ambassadors about what they think about certain products that we're thinking about bringing into the collection, whether it's something that's functional or something that's more aesthetic based, but really understanding the problems that they have and creating innovative products that solve for those problems of living in small spaces. And um, even though there are 2 million plus new freshmen that start college every year, and they're for the most part living in the same types of places year over year, there's always new challenges to solve for. And even now there's a lot of housing that's being renovated and redone, and they're going to start putting more full-size bed beds rather than twin XL beds into buildings. Um, as things get updated, you know, there might be more opportunities for small kitchen spaces or different bathroom spaces. So just understanding um, what the needs are on a every year basis, but in season, the types of feedback that we hear is, um, really about like getting their product to campus and helping to solve those problems, which is an example of where we go above and beyond in our customer service. So if you're shopping with, you know, a large retailer, or an Amazon or whatever, no one's going to talk to you about how to figure out when to get your package between August 3rd and August 8th right. in Michigan. And like the best ways to do it if you have to hold an order, you know, things like that. So we offer all sorts of different um, advice and tips and um, third-party resources that you can use. And um, we just really try to be both a stylist, a therapist at times, and a big sister. Oh, that's so great. Families. I think about that as you say, a therapist, because that 
emotional connection that you have with these students or those that are moving into their first apartment, this is a moment they're never going to forget. So the fact that Dormify is there to make them feel good, make the room look beautiful and have it be a really good start to whatever chapter that is in their life is a connection. As you were saying, it's like if you can get them early and you can build that connection, you know, babies to 10 year olds through college and into their next chapter in quote unquote, the real world, um, that's an emotional connection you've created. A hundred percent. It's such an emotional pivotal moment. And we love that Dormify, the brand can be um, associated with this emotional moment. And that's why we do have to act as therapists because we're not just selling something. It's not just a transaction. It's a moment that they're going to remember forever from, you know, designing their room to meeting their roommate, leaving their parents on move-in day. Um, It's the beginning of a new chapter and we want them to both feel like their new space is somewhere that feels like them, but also reminds them of home. And there's nothing that the parents want more than to leave their student feeling comfortable and um, at ease in their new place. Because there's a lot of new things happening at once. So Oh my gosh. Well, I go back to it again. I wish I had Dormify. (laughs) I had to make it my own, but the one-stop shop that it is, is is truly remarkable. Um, But talk to me about keeping them through the year because, you know, you talk about May through August is that really crunch time when people are thinking about the rooms. Certainly you have people who get the acceptance, you know, early, let's say in December, January, and they're already thinking about their room. But what does that seasonality look like? And and how do you keep them on the hook through throughout the whole year? If you do, you may not. And maybe you're targeting other consumers during that time. Yeah, I can start and <clears throat> my mom can jump in. But that's one of our biggest challenges is being a seasonal business and the amount of effort and resources it takes to support this four month season. But we do it. Um, We do it with a lean team so that we can support a year round business, but we have a lot of ideas on how to really extend that seasonality. So one example that's relevant right now, um, we do have a diploma frame business as well for graduating seniors and they can get um, customized diploma frames that are all made in the U S with their school name on it. And it's a really great graduation gift. So, um, if you're listening to this and have a family member who's graduating, yes. hit up dormify.com. Exactly. Um, Good timing. But we also have a couple of other ways that we keep the consumer engaged in the off season. One in a shopping capacity. Um, we try to speak to other relevant lifestyle moments that happen throughout the school year, whether it's tailgating or spring break or holiday gifting. Um, we'll bring in some new product for each of those moments that happen throughout the school year. And gifting is really the big opportunity that you're going to see a lot more of from Dormify over the next 12 months, I would say. Um, We are going to be really expanding our gifting category to be into, you know, consumables and and food and perishable product, flowers, plants, you name it, um, as well as school, uh, school specific, like spirit product or tailgate product that is not what you would find in your campus bookstore, but something that is dormified and um, just more unique um, from vendors that we feel like really fit our brand aesthetic. And I want to ask about that because in terms of vendor partnerships, you know, first of all, let's go back to the dormify product and that process. Um, Can you tell me a little bit about that and, and sort of what that time frame is for any new launches that you have? Yeah. Another one of the challenges in our business. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> um, Hitting the challenges. So we, it's really, um, let's say we start the process in earnest um, nine months before launching it, but it really takes a full year. So it's May now. We're going to start thinking about our trend presentation for 2025. And we get to learn a little bit about the performance of um our back to school season before we have to make decisions, which makes it really difficult. We don't get the um, benefit of seeing the full season of selling and trends and feedback and move in day and all of that before we have to really be um, very far along with our development for new product. And the reason for that is honestly just because of when Chinese New Year falls and um, the manufacturing calendar overseas. So because of that, we 
do two things. We're looking at some shorter lead time um, manufacturing opportunities in countries like Mexico, where it's just not going to take as long, um, as well as domestic uh, on-demand type of product where we can bring newness to our customer on a a shorter lead time basis. Um, But we also bring new products to the site that are sourced from third-party vendors. Um, So just to be clear about the Dormify brand, we design and manufacture our own line of products, but we also curate from other brands and other artists and designers to really complete the one-stop shops that we can deliver, you know, every aesthetic, every category, as many budgets as we can possibly cater to. And we're able to onboard new product on a more frequent basis because of the fact that we have these dropship partnerships with many third-party vendors. So you see that a lot more with retailers now. If you think about Goop, we we really want to be the Goop of college where you have your Dormify brand or your Goop brand and then it's all of Gwyneth's favorite things. So yes. what are all Dormify's favorite yes, things? Yes, exactly. Yeah, so, but our development pro- uh, process is pretty detailed and complex because we are producing so many different categories of product. We work with, you know, 10 different partners to execute the number of SKUs that we have, which is about 300 SKUs under our own, our own brand. And we work in um, many countries globally. And it's a combination of, of, you know, basic essentials where we're trying to get the best quality for the best price or more on-trend items like a cane headboard where we only produce a certain limited quantity of units, but it's something that's really on-trend and, you know, we we have fun marketing around it. Yeah, I was going to say, and, you know, you talk about this, this idea of the, you know, concept concept of aspirational lifestyle um, and making it attainable. So you also have to keep sort of budget in mind and the right pricing when you're going into any of the production for any of the categories that you have, which is amazing to me because I go on your, you know, Instagram and on the site just to see the breadth of product you have. You really do address every aspect of the room. (laughs) Yes. Which is incredible. Um, is there anything that your consumers or your your clients, your your consumer base, what are they asking for? Have they have they thrown you any sort of uh, you know surprises in terms of what they want that you didn't think that they would want? I think that social media just really fuels it. So we'll hear different things because of different trends. So one, um, I'm sure many people have seen how. Bama Rush has really taken over the internet over the last couple of years. So this um, introduction of what Southern girls are doing in their rooms is much more visible now. So something that people are really asking for are desk skirts, like a bed skirt, but a desk skirt. Wow. So that they can have, you know, their desktop with a um, touch on top of it with a built-in vanity mirror because they're getting ready with me videos are really important. And then a desk (laughs) skirt. So it looks very polished and clean. Yeah. Um, So that's one of them. Um, There's also just more investments in different furniture pieces in these rooms. Now, I'm not sure if that's related to just renovations happening in buildings and getting more space or more um, sweet style living, but, you know, small space sofas and multifunctional furniture um, cabinets that you can put a mini fridge in or, uh, small, uh, futons that can, you know, be a sofa and, a an extra bed, but there's a, a lot of vanity space stuff that's definitely being requested. I love the word vanity. Cause as we talk about again, social media, it's like <laughs> the vanity of, you know, doing these TikToks and having to have yeah. the look, including your room, having the look, cause that's your backdrop. Exactly. So it's a direct reflection of whatever is going on on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your model around e-com and, and how you decided to stick with e-com. I, you know, I did read you've done some pop-ups. So I want to hear a little bit about where you began and, and sort of where you're evolving um, as you continue to grow and, and maybe even globally. Are we thinking about taking this on a global level? Karen, I want to hear from you. Yeah, I mean, I'm the big dreamer, so I definitely think we're going to be taking it global. Good. Um, just to answer your question about the pop-ups, when when we started doing the pop-ups, they were really successful. And 
it was it was a great way for us to give the customer the opportunity to touch and feel the product. And we knew exactly where to put them. I think the last year that we had pop-ups, we had either five or six. And the the community was excited when we came in. And it was a really great opportunity for a parent and child to shop together. And a lot of times there was that therapy session going on with the parent separate from the child because Amanda left out a little bit about how sad the parents are for their students yes. because their kids are leaving. Yeah. Um, but the model was great. And, it, you know, what I believe about the retail side of the business is that the pop-ups kind of stood out as, as a big billboard for us in that community. And the opportunity to take that nationwide was something that we always believed we could do. But COVID kind of got in the way. And we had a store um, remain open, you know, it closed for a little bit during COVID, but we weren't really sure how we were going to execute post-COVID. And we ended up um, staying with our pop-ups a year after COVID. And they didn't do as well, but they didn't do bad. You know, and if we look back on it, they didn't do bad. It was just a decision on where to spend the time and effort and really the fact that the business was scaling online, you know, much faster and stronger. But what what purpose did those pop-ups play in kind of our results digitally from our inception to today? And I think like if we take a look back at it, look at data, because we're very, very big on digging into data. Um we'll find an opportunity to do it again somehow in the future. But I think that leads into a good conversation about what we did with Container Store. Yeah. And actually that's leading me right into the conversation about Container Store. Tell me, how did that, how did that partnership evolve and, and how did it go and where are we today? So we, we were working, it really all started, and this is you know good for everyone to hear, um, through one of our investors making it in, um, reaching out on LinkedIn and then making an introduction. And then Amanda and I took it from there and worked with the team to create that year something that was was a really great start for Dormify and Container Store together. And that was having beds in stores with the ability to buy things online through a QR code. I think the fact that the Container Store signed on to that that partnership was really amazing. It was kind of unheard of for them to have a brand like ours featured in store when you couldn't actually transact on the container store's website. I was going to ask that. Yeah. It was really for like, it was to show that the container store knew what was relevant. And the fact that they had the Dormify brand in the store gave more credibility to college students shopping for the container store items that were relevant for storage and organization. So um, we, you know, had an affiliate relationship that was executed in a physical, expensive storefront mm-hmm. location, which was a really great way to learn and how to, you know, extend that relationship into something bigger where we would be selling Dormify product through the container store um, platform. So I just wanted to point out that like they took a risk doing that. And I think it was um, it amazing that we got the opportunity to do so and, and then, you know, build upon it the following week. Year, which you were about to tell about. And when you had that conversation, because I think it is interesting for our listeners to hear how that evolved, because did you all push that? Did you see that opportunity and say, listen, this is an incredible partnership. You already have people coming in for the containers, but let's do it in this way. Because I think that's really interesting how those conversations evolve. I, I mean, I think it was mutual from the beginning. You know, when you think about it, you have big brands. Um, and you have more modern, innovative, yeah, with the smaller cred. brands, yeah. right? And and the best opportunity is partnership because you're each going to bring something to the table. And how do you both get the bo- the, the best out of that partnership? Um, so when we did it, the first year was successful. The second year, we were working on something bigger with them. And I, you know, one day just took a risk and sent an email to the CEO. To, to talk about something bigger, you know, what could something bigger look like? And uh, to my surprise, he responded. And 
I was luckily going to be in Dallas for um, the Cotton Bowl that bowl that year, and I reached out and I said, "You know, can we have a meeting?" And we actually had a meeting, and in that meeting, and actually on the call when we first had our very first call, we talked about doing something bold. He really wanted to do something bold. He didn't just want to come out and do the same thing. And we felt really good about that. But remember, this is like the first week of January when you're having your very first meeting about it. So both teams had to be very, very nimble in order to get this accomplished. But what that did was last year, we actually opened more of a shop in a shop in about um, six stores. And it, there was a cash and carry element, like, like what Amanda was talking about before. Now people could come in, they could see a large assortment of Dormify products mixed in with the container store products to get you the best result for your dorm room. And it felt like a little shop and it was amazing. They'd pick up their pillow and take it. Uh, if, if it was near a campus, they could do it right like as they were moving in. So it was really successful. And we then continued to have, I think there was about 45 other stores where we had the similar pop-up with the beds and the signage, um, which led to the online um, purchase. So it was good. I mean, I would just say for that, like, I've always been the type of person who like takes risk because what, why not? Like, what do you have to lose? So if someone doesn't respond, they don't respond. Okay. Um, so it's that kind of thing that I think with Dormify, we've been able to, to do that um, because we have nothing to lose. Right. And to our, you know, we're, we're so happy that most of the brands that we speak to know us and are interested in doing some sort of a partnership like that. That's so great. And and you've got some words of wisdom in there as well as I was listening to you, you know, from your your entrepreneurial days and how you've launched businesses and certainly, you know, taking the risk and what do you have to lose, right? And going big. It feels like certainly Dormify just continues to go big. Um, so you're an incredible role model, Karen, to Amanda, but I see this dynamic duo between the two of you, again, going back to the strengths you bring to the table. Um, Tell me about the future of Dormify, you know, as you're continuing to go big and make an impact. <laughs> what's what's your wildest dreams, Amanda? Where do you want to take Dormify? <laughs> um, well, I feel like we've talked about a few of them already, but I think generally taking what we've done for this milestone moment of moving to college and extending that into other life moments. So whether that's your first big girl room, um, which we're already kind of doing, but maybe there's a sub brand that gets wrapped into it or your first nursery as a mother and designing the nursery, um, extending into just other phases of life and continuing to build that authentic emotional relationship at these important milestones is what we would like to do. What that means though, is not just, you know, marketing the moment. It's about continuing to develop product that is unique, that is innovative, that's solving problems, that's differentiated from the other um, brands or retailers that are in those verticals. But it's also um, the service and the not only the customer service, but just like the tools and the offerings that go along with selling product. Something that we didn't talk too much about yet is Dormify is really a platform of solutions. It's not necessarily a store or a retailer. Um, I laugh all the time because whenever I meet a 17 or 18 year old or even, you know, an upperclassman, they say to me, I'm like, have you ever heard of Dormify before? And they're like, yeah, of course. I used Dormify freshman year. I used you guys. And I'm like, <laughs> Cool. Like no one will ever say I shopped at Dormify. Yeah. It's just like I used that used, service of yeah. Dormify um, when I was trying to solve a problem of where do I get everything I need for college. So with that said, um, I think that there's so many more tech focused um, add-ons that we can add to the portfolio beyond just products so that we're truly making the process for any of these moments more seamless. Um, some of the things that we do today are, you know, fully shoppable room inspiration where you can see the mannequin essentially and shop it. 
or our bed visualizer tool where you can mix and match something to make it your own or our newly launched dorm registry where you can register for all of the things that you want for your room and then ask your family and friends to get you those items as graduation gifts. So those are kind of like the table stakes stuff. But from there, like, I don't know, all of the logistical challenges that come into play during move in day, we have so much data and our relationship with our customer to build upon creating more products, both physical and technical yeah. that can help this, this uh, experience be memorable, stylish and seamless. That's amazing. Well, speaking to the data that you received, and I'm not going to keep you all too much longer, but I am curious, you know, I would say this is a predominantly female oriented business, but can you talk to me a little bit about what's your male customer look like? Because I know my boys need Dormify and I direct them <laughs> towards Dormify. I have a college student and then another one who's going to be going off to boarding school. But what is that split that currently? It's definitely more female focused, but we do have a large um, male audience as well, even though it doesn't seem like it as much from visiting our website. But we did just launch a dedicated experience for guys and their families to shop for them. Um, we do also have a, a line of business where we work directly with universities and we send out mail and email to um, incoming freshmen from their schools endorsing Dormify. And it's very much a 50-50 split in that uh, vertical. So the the schools really help us to reach the consumer for, you know, much less than what you can do on digital marketing channels these days. And it's a really great symbiotic relationship. Um, but yeah, it's 50, 50 there. And then we kind of treat our D to, we treat our direct to consumer channel a little bit differently because people are obviously like have a higher intent. They're coming directly to us from social or word of mouth or, um, any sort of acquisition channel that they're coming in on. But this year we've definitely made more of an effort to have, uh, inspiration and product for guys. And this will continue to grow as part of the near, the near term, uh, growth opportunities. Yeah. Well, listen, it's, it's not that they don't care about their rooms, but certainly they will be influenced by, yeah, maybe a little bit yeah. less than the girls. Well, they care. one They're thing caring more and more now, Yeah, I they feel. are caring more and more true. They care more now, but also the mom always cares. Yes. That so is true. we really try to speak to the mom or the parent as like, you know, they really want their child to be comfortable. So it doesn't have to be like so stylish. It'll be like clean and styled and blue and gray and it, and a, a nice poster on the wall or, yes. or a framed canvas or something. But the moms don't want to leave that room like some sort of dungeon. They want it to like be comfortable and we're there for them. Right. Well, I love it. Now, Amanda, last question before we start to wrap things up here. What are you most excited about? Any, you know, upcoming collaborations we can talk about? Any any projects you have coming up? Yeah, a few different things. So we do have a, a pretty substantial retail expansion that is happening this summer. Um, we're continuing our relationship with the container store um, online, and you'll be able to buy Dormify products at the container store's website. but we are also going to be in 200 doors of another retailer um, that's launching at the beginning of June. And then we'll also be at, I think, close to 100 campus bookstores with product that you can buy on site and um, you know have right on move-in day. So a lot of expansion of channels where you can buy the Dormify product which is very exciting. And it's really helping to solve for a problem that I spoke a lot about last summer in the press with our container store partnership. But students and families are really struggling to um, get their essentials and their decor to campus when they're not driving there. So having 200 locations plus the 100 campus bookstores is really going to allow that buy in one city, pick up in another that Bed Bath and Beyond used to do so well. We're taking a, a stab at that in a smaller way. It's something that we want to really expand on in the future, but we're not really a logistics company. So we have yeah. to be partnering with the right people to make sure that we can follow through on that promise because there's nothing worse than not being able right. to guarantee that promise. That's 
that's what I've learned. <laughs> yes, here. exactly. That's really exciting. Yeah. So the retail expansion, the um, dorm registry that I mentioned is new for this year, which we're really excited about. Um, we have a fun bath category collaboration launching later in the summer. And we have a lot more categories where you can do personalization and customization, which I think is right in line with what this cus- this consumer is looking for. So pillows, blankets, um, towels, neon signs, of course, which is a really popular category, but much more of that this year. Yeah, that's exciting. Okay, so la- we're going to wrap it up because I could talk to you all day long. This has been fascinating. But I think, Karen, you gave us a piece of advice when you were talking about going after that CEO. And, um, you know, as you've been building businesses, I would love to hear from both of you sort of just a quick what advice would you give to entrepreneurs? You both are incredible entrepreneurs at different stages of your life. Um, what advice, Karen, would you give a young entrepreneur? And, and Amanda, I'm going to ask you the same question. All right, I'll give you two things. One is you have to love what you're doing. And if you don't exactly love what you, you're doing, you at least have to love the challenge of what you're doing. Um, second thing I would say is always surround yourself with a supportive network of advisors and peers who can really offer guidance and expertise so that you, you know, stay on track and you, and you can grow quickly. So this might be really simple, but something that I say to students that I speak to all the time is if you want to start your own business or be entrepreneurial, just make sure that you're solving a problem. There's so many people that want to be an entrepreneur, but don't have a problem that they can identify as a true problem that needs a solution. Um, so that's something that I would just ask myself if I wanted to venture into something um, at the very beginning. The second thing that I would say um, is I totally agree with the supportive network of advisors and you know fellow peers who are in a similar position as you. I know that I in my early and mid twenties, always said yes to any sort of networking where I could meet other founders or other operators. And I've really like made that network part of who I am. And I, it's part of like why I've been successful that I can just text people and ask questions. Um, so I totally agree with that. And something that I think is really, um, relevant right now, just as so many companies similar to ours are really focused on profitability is teaching the team the basics of how to run a profitable business and giving transparency into financials in a way that I feel like was kind of unheard of a few years ago. So in the days of raising tons of venture capital, when you didn't really have to look at the unit economics and profitability, teams didn't know much. And we have very much taken our team along for the ride so that they understand with every decision that they're making, what the impact is so that they can all operate like business owners. So I think at any size organization, if you can take your team along and have them understand a level of the financial picture, it's really helpful for them to grow and be well-rounded. Yeah, and they're then invested in building the business alongside with you and it just grows that yeah. loyalty and support. Well, ladies, this has been really just an incredible conversation. Um, you know, you are solving a problem and it continues to grow and, and what you're doing is is truly inspirational. So as I said from the beginning, I wish I had Dormify back in the day when I was in school, but I'm grateful you're here now for my kids. So <laughs> thank you for your time And I can't wait um, to continue to watch the growth of Dormify. And for our listeners, definitely check Dormify out on social media and um, in all stages of your life. And we wish you both and Dormify the best of luck in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to learn a little bit more about Traub, you can go to traub.io where you'll learn a lot about everything that we do. If you're enjoying the safari, please do share it with your friends and colleagues within the industry. And please also don't forget to subscribe and like it. Until next time.